Vermont Junior Drag for My name is Bill. If you haven't learned about it yet, go ahead and check out check us out at Junior Dragster Plus. Uh, that'll be you know I'll add a link at the uh, bottom of this uh, video here. And my name is uh, my username on the board is Wild Bill. Go ahead, ask it all the questions you want. There are no silly questions, just, you know, we've heard it all before, and we've all been there before, so go ahead, give us a shout out, and check us out, and we'll be more, we'll all be more than happy to help you. Now, on to the video. Hey everyone, welcome to another Learning Junior Dragsters video, my name is Bill. Today's video I'm going to show you a few of the ins and outs of the Micron 4660 and how you can uh, input some things like your gear ratio, uh, you know, track name, driver's name, uh, view the recorded runs, uh, switch from extended time to standard recording time. I'm not going to go through all, you know, everything about installing the Micron, that's pretty much straightforward. I'm not going to show you, uh, you know, how you plug in your data key to download. You know, again, that's pretty straightforward, but give you, you know, some in insight on what everything is inside the main menu and all the, you know, the configuration wizard, the control panel, everything like that. So let's get you moved in, zoomed in on the Micron, and uh, we'll get started. Okay, now that we got you moved in close to where you can uh, see the Micron, now when you... When you're actually going to make a pass, the Micron will actually turn on automatically once it senses that the engine has started. It'll see the RPM signal, it'll turn on automatically, you won't have to do anything. But for just sitting here, if you want to actually, you know, adjusting the settings and everything and, you know, inputting names and configuration into the car, you know, or into the Micron itself, you do need to turn it on push the button over here it'll come on on the main screen you'll have your engine RPM your exhaust gas temperature and your cylinder head temperature displayed you press the menu button and that'll bring up everything where you can uh, input data in you know first box here will be your backlight you want to turn that on, just hit OK, turn it off, hit OK. You can also see here on the side, these buttons will say Enter, Exit, Previous, and Next. And these are the two that you'll use to scroll through the menu. And we'll scroll to the next one. That'll come down, and that'll be how you, where you enter your track, it, you know, which track you want to run at. We'll hit OK, and then you can see I've got a couple different tracks already listed. You know, you can come in here and select a different track by, you know, you can see the arrow here I've got selected for uh, Norwalk. If I wanted to go race at Thompson and have it, you know, store that, you know, re record that I'm actually racing in a different track, I'll hit Enter. And you see the arrow move. And since Norwalk's my home track, we're gonna set that back. Or if you need to add a track, you see where it says "Add New Track," and that'll bring up your alphabet. And you scroll your cursor using the arrow keys. and then hit the memory OK button to add a letter and it'll display down here what you're typing in. And I'm just going to type home. Now if you wanted to save that bring the cursor down to highlight the save button and hit OK. Since I don't want to save that, 
I'll just hit exit and you can see it didn't fail. And then to come back out, go back to the main menu, hit exit again. Next tab is your control panel. We'll hit enter to enter the control pattern. Or we'll hit enter to enter the control panel. And here we have RPM setup. RPM setup lets you adjust the maximum RPM. Enter that. And you can use the up and down to adjust the maximum RPM. Temperature setup is the next one. I'll hit enter. And that'll allow, allow you to set low arc low cylinder head alarm, low EGT alarm, and set your units if you want to use Fahrenheit or Celsius range. Again, setup is just the same as everything else. You hit OK. I have it turned off, but if you wanted to turn it on, you know, turn it on. You know, you just hit the incline button until you get a temperature set that you want to use and then what will happen is the micron will actually flash a red light if you're below that temperature hit OK, it'll save hit exit, it'll return you back to the, your control panel and now the next one we go to is system setup. In system setup set time and date reverse and system information select set time and date and that'll let you adjust, you know, using the arrows, that'll let you adjust your time, date, to move from hours to minutes. Hit the OK button. Adjust the second. Adjust the year. Same. What the reverse feature does is it, well, I'll show you. All it does is reverse the contrast so that your numbers are green and your background is black. System information tells you a bunch of technical stuff about the actual unit itself. Inputting, next button we have is the driver, and that's just the same as if you were entering your track. You just and you know move the cursor over with the buttons. You type in their driver's name.
language, default comes set to English. I suppose if you're running in France or Sweden, or maybe even possibly up in northern Canada and you know French Canadians, you might want to change that. But for the vast majority of us, we'll never go into that. Now most of this stuff, the engine RPM, temperature, you know, all, all this will be found in the next one. The only thing you really need to do in this panel is set your driver's name and then you can exit out of it. As you can see as we come down to our next tab which is the configuration wizard, you get to select your temperature units as well. You know, you can switch between, toggle between Fahrenheit and Celsius. We're going to leave it in Fahrenheit. Hit the OK button. Here you can see our low EGT alarm. We can set that here as well. Low cylinder head temp. Same thing, just scroll up till you get the number you want. Maximum RPM. Tire roll out. Important. Best way to do this is take a seamstress tape measure, measure the, uh, you know, inflate your tires to the proper, you know, what you would run at down track, and, you know, just scroll up and down till you get the number that clo best closest matches what you measure the rollout to be. Once you have that, hit OK. Drive gear. This is the gear on, you know, number of teeth on the jack shaft. You know, again, just up and down until you get the uh, correct gear. Driven gear. This is the gear on the axle. They're usually stamped, you know, they're stamped with what they are, so you don't have to go and count every tooth. You know, again, just increase, decrease till you get the proper number. Then here you can adjust your hour, minutes, next tab will be, you know, hit it, you know, okay. You'll get the year, hit it again, enter the year, you can adjust the month, adjust the day, adjust the day of the week, And then it'll save, every, you know, once you're done, it'll save everything and return you back to the main display screen. Alright, after we're done with the configuration wizard, next button is your speed setup. We'll enter the speed setup. And here, here again you can select your tire rollout, you can input your drive gear, and you can set your driven gear. But one of the most important features in here is the recording time. This will be especially handy for 1290 guys. You want to come down here, hit enter, and that will select extended recording time. You want to go back, hit the enter button again, that will switch it back to standard recording time. And the extended recording time is useful for 1290 because it actually, uh, you know, the cars are so slow, you won't, a lot of times you won't get the entire pass recorded or it won't even recognize that you're making a pass at all because the cars leave so slow. So, if you want to leave it on extended, Go ahead and hit the exit button and that'll save everything. Next button down is your engine pass counter. We'll select engine pass counter. And that'll allow you to come down you know, if you want to 
see how many total runs are on the micron itself or if you want to select a particular engine or if you want to keep track of between refreshes which is what I've been doing you know and how many passes we'll make in one year you know then I'll select another engine or I'll just come in here and I'll clear that and then this button here is obviously self-explanatory that's where you clear all the test data that you don't you know that the micron saved for making runs exit and that brings you back to the display alright we're back at the uh, main display screen and the last thing I want to show you guys is how to view a graph on the micron you'll hit the uh, memory button and that will bring up the test runs and you can select between which test you want by hitting the uh, arrow buttons you find the one you want to display hit the OK button and that will show you the engine RPM and jack shaft RPM and you can move you know, to shrink, display, shrink the display down, use your arrow buttons to uh, zoom in, zoom out of the run. And then hit the view button. And that's really useful if you, you know, you think you had a tire spin or, you know, think you had a burp and you don't have time to actually download the micro, you know, from the micron to, to your laptop and view the graph there. You can actually view the graph right on right on the unit itself and you can see whether or not you know the tires spun or your driver lifted or anything else that you would normally only see if you were to actually download the run to the graph alright and the last thing I want to show you guys is how you can test to see if your jack or see if if your jack shaft is working properly. You hit the off button, you can see the number of recorded tests, the battery voltage, and here you see the shaft speed. And as you spin the rear tire, nope, oh, that took too long. As you see the you know as you spin the rear tire, you can see your jack shaft. You know, as long as you see something moving, you know your jack shaft's working. And then to turn it off, just keep the button pressed. But it, or if you just leave it alone, it'll shut off on its own. And I think that pretty much covers everything.